Good morning, I'm Mr. Scriber, and welcome to chapel. I look forward to bringing you the truths of God's word today. I know it's a little bit dangerous to talk about hunger and thirst, because I realize that maybe some of you haven't eaten breakfast, and right after chapel is always snack time. So realizing that, I'm taking a little bit of a chance just reminding you of that, but Jesus did often used uh, the hunger and thirst thing as an analogy to help people learn a lesson. And he does that in our, in our text today. Uh, seems to be um, a common thing for people in Jesus' day to be hungry, even extremely hungry. Uh, we see examples of when Jesus fed the 5,000 and again the 4,000 and told his disciples, I don't want these people going on their way without food because they might become faint. Thankfully, I've never been that hungry before, uh, but I have been hungry, and it's something that you focus on, and it's something that uh, you want to take care of and cure. And so heading to the snack machines after chapel might be your way of doing that. Today, we're going to look at that from a spiritual perspective uh, from uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Here, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled I'm going to turn the passage around a little bit, and then we're going to talk about each of these passages and how it pertains to our desire and passion for the reading and studying of God's Word. I think it reads better this way, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we will be filled and blessed. So what is this idea of um, hunger and thirst for righteousness? This hunger and thirst is a longing for and a yearning for uh, learning more about the righteousness of God and all the blessings that the Word of God brings us. It has to be, um, I can't live without this attitude or I must have it at all costs. That's really what happens when somebody is desperately hungry. Uh, They can't do without food anymore and they're going to find food at all costs. Jesus wants us to have that same kind of an attitude about reading and studying his word. Because in his word, uh, we seek out his righteousness. We know that God's righteousness is a pure heart and a pure mind. And thanks be to God for sending Jesus uh, for us that allows us to have this righteousness as well in God's eyes. And while here on earth, we want to make sure that we read and study his word so that we are Uh, full of humility, and we have patience, and we have peace, and kindness, self-control, gentleness, and all the things that God lists for us in His Word. Because when we read and study God's Word, uh, we are filled. And again, going back to the eating analogy, if you've ever eaten too much, you know that there's a point where you say, I just can't fit another thing in. I can't eat another thing. Well, that's what happens when we read and study God's Word. When we fill our hearts and minds with God's Word, there's just not much room for anything else. And most oftentimes that anything else are the things of the world, uh, things that our sinful flesh and the devil wants us to put in there. So God wants us to have this passion and yearning for filling our hearts and minds with His Word. And then we'll be blessed. And the blessings that God talks about here Uh, go well beyond the blessings of this earth. Maybe the best way to describe this is that it's the ultimate well-being and this distinctive joy, spiritual joy, that we share when we're part of God's kingdom. In Romans chapter 10, uh, God tells us, seek first his kingdom, or Matthew chapter 6, sorry, seek first his kingdom, and then all of these things are going to be added in our lives. So God throughout the the Bible reminds us that we have one priority, and that's to fill ourselves with the love of Jesus through the study of his word. And by God's grace, we can enjoy this ultimate spiritual joy, knowing that God spares those who have faith in Jesus. And then in Romans chapter 10, uh, we're reminded that faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. I realize that there may be a mad rush to the snack and drink machines after chapel. People are hungry. Um, And I pray that that's the same kind of an attitude that we have when we have opportunities to read and study God's word here at Shore Lutheran High School. 
Maybe by the time second set's over, I just can't wait to get to chapel, or I just can't wait to get to my religion class. Certainly that's uh, the prayer that we have for you. It's the prayer that I have for myself. And we certainly ask God to give us that I can't live without it, and I need it at all cost attitude towards the need for the words that he gives us in his word. Heavenly Father, we humbly approach you today with sincere thankfulness for the saving work of Jesus and all the opportunities you give us to fill our hearts and minds with your saving word. Help us appreciate and take advantage of the opportunities we have at school to grow in the knowledge of your saving work and the blessings that we have by your marvelous grace. Fill our hearts and minds so that we can live for you and do all things to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.